Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of Joe Boo Sports Report, as well as Joe Boo's day job and cooking and tailgating with Joe Boo. So we're here at the Red Brick House, and out here on the uh, porch here, I have my herb garden here. I've got rosemary, I've got thyme, I've got sage in here, I've got oregano, I've got Thai basil, I've got regular basil, and here you can see some of my cow horn pepper plants. And there's nothing better than cooking with fresh ingredients. If you could smell this right here, this is going to be for our steak. Oh my goodness. We're going to basically do, um, I just got back on to doing keto. I realized looking at some of the videos from Vermont how big my belly has gotten and that visceral fat around the middle is just bad. And I'm doing keto. I know a lot of people are concerned about keto. They say that, you know, all that fat and stuff that you're eating and everything else, that it's bad. Well, there's more than one way to skin the cat, so to speak. Um, for me, uh, doing keto is having more vegetables, um, having good, good, good meats and things in there. It's not to say I won't throw some bacon in there from time to time, but um, in moderation. Instead of going to a steakhouse and having, you know, an 18-ounce piece of prime rib, you know, we're taking a steak, slicing it, you know, and putting it in a steak bowl salad, uh, putting in lots of fresh ingredients, some avocado and tomatoes and things like that, having the cheese and the sour cream and uh, stuff with it. And so today, I have a T-bone steak that I'm going to grill, and we're going to basically make like a crusting that's going to go on here. We're going to take the rosemary, the thyme, and garlic, salt, um, pepper, and um, a little chipotle chili powder and we're going to put that on top of the steak with some Worcestershire sauce and some balsamic vinegar we're going to let that kind of marinate and that's going to give the steak an incredible taste and for me the thing that's great about doing keto is it's the flavors it's the taste to it um you're going to miss of course your carbs and things like that but for me it ends up working out pretty well so we're going to head to the kitchen here and start working with these herbs all right, so here's what we're gonna have. We're gonna have a nice steak bowl for dinner tonight. And for me, I love a nice flavorful steak. You see this T-bone right here? This will be more than enough for me and my wife to go on to this steak bowl. Now, I haven't seen one of these since I was in Seattle some years back. This is a piece of elephant garlic. And like I said, I like garlic that's in big pieces. This is more than I need. But what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take some masonic vinegar we're going to pour a little of that onto the steak. This is what I like to do with my steaks to give them a lot of extra flavor. We're going to end up putting some Worcestershire sauce on top of it. Okay. And then we're going to flip it over so we get all of that moisture on the steak itself. Okay. So we got that on there. We're going to take the elephant garlic. This is, like I said, overkill. I'm going to save some of this for another recipe. But we're going to take that elephant garlic, and we're going to take our fresh herbs. This rosemary is so aromatic, it's incredible, the flavor of it. You just can't get the same thing um, when you end up getting it dried in a jar. And that's where you go to your home center, you can buy a few plants and put them in there, or you can buy the seeds. And the same thing with the thyme. The thyme is great. And what's cool about thyme, um, some of your spices, your sage, your thyme, your oregano, those plants will winter over and um, will come back the next year. So you only have to buy them once. Um, what I do at home is I actually have a few rosemary plants that are growing in the window. And if you just touch them with your hand when you go over by the sink, you'll end up getting this incredible rosemary smell to it. But we're going to take... You can see right there, I love my kitchen. I, I built my kitchen so it was perfect for me to be able to work in, where everything is close by. But what we're going to do is we're going to slice and dice all this stuff here together. And then we're going to take the salt and the pepper and um, the chipotle chili powder. I like chipotle chili powder. I love garlic. Um, those are tastes that, to me, transmend more than just um, Hispanic cooking. It's just like a really earthy pepper taste to it. Now you can see right here 
how I'm getting that together. So we're going to put that chipotle chili powder. A good amount on that. We're going to take our Himalayan salt. This is actually a seasoned one. And we're going to take our fresh pepper. Listen, don't buy pepper already done. Grind your pepper. Get the extra work in. Now, one other thing that you want to do when you're cooking your steak is you want it to get almost to room temperature um, when you cook it because it'll hold the flavors better. If you go from like uh, trying to defrost it in the microwave um, and then uh, cooking it immediately, the shock, it almost shocks it and you don't want to do that. So take the meat out like I'm seasoning right now. And I'm going to let it sit out for about 15 minutes or so. Now, if it's like 100 degrees in the house, don't let it sit out that long, okay? Now, you can see my seasoning here. Look at that. See that? That's going to now get put all into the steak in here. This is going to end up infusing all of that into the steak and we're going to grill it now i don't have the same grill that i have at home it's actually a, uh, more like a portable one and it doesn't get as hot as i would like but if i were with my weber um, grill i would get the temperature up to about 550 degrees to really sear in all of that heat and stuff in there uh, to sear in the juices and things and then drop the temperature down to about 400 and then get the internal temperature for me I like around about 30 degrees and then you can take it off and let it rest so you can see look at how pretty that looks so that's going to be encrusted with those spices and things on there and I'll take a little bit of the the the, the uh, balsamic vinegar and the Worcestershire sauce and put some more on that so that's step one step two We'll be actually making the salad, which is really easy. So I'll get my ingredients ready for that. All right, so this is the easy part now. And this is going to be good because uh, maybe tomorrow I'll do a shrimp bowl um, as well. And so basically I can go ahead and do enough lettuce and stuff for today. So I've got some nice, look at this head. Oh, isn't that beautiful right there? Um, I've got some spring onions. I got some white onions and I got some red onions that we're going to put in there. And we have some tomatoes. Now, I am going to do something that traditional keto people are going to kill me for. But here's what I want you to understand is, beans are still good for you. The only thing you have to understand is, is this. Beans do have a lot of carbs. I am going to do some black beans. A half a cup of black beans will end up being, I think it's 9 carbs or 10 carbs. So, what we're going to do is, we're only going to put about a quarter cup of beans in there. So, I'll give us about 5 or 6 carbs. But since today I only had basically uh, my um, keto wet salad today, I had my black coffee, I haven't had any carbs, so I'm going to be okay putting in a few carbs with the beans. So our salad is going to consist of, of course, having our uh, romaine lettuce, our onions that are going to go in there. We're going to actually grill some onions and some red peppers in and then add the beans with some chipotle chili powder to give them a little extra flavor and stuff on there. And when we put all this together, now check this out. While we were up in Vermont, Calvert, uh, Cab, Cab, Cheese, Cab, Cabot Cheese, Cabot Cheese, is a, that, that's where it all comes from. I got some horseradish cheddar cheese. This is going to go great with the steak. So when we put all this together, we got the blue cheese dressing, which has got all the great fats in there. Um, I've got some avocado slices we'll put into the salad. We'll have that nice rare steak that'll go in there. Just a few beans just to give it a little extra texture. Uh, a few tomatoes. you got to be careful with tomatoes too because those have the carbs. And then the lettuce and stuff. And it will be a fantastic meal. Now for those out there, because I have a lot of people that are saying, Oh my God, you're going to be doing keto. It's so unhealthy um, for you. Um, I look at it and I say, this right here, what I'm eating, I don't look at this and think that this is really that unhealthy. Um, I think that this is actually a really good, clean meal um, as far as this goes. There's not a lot of grease because the steak, of course, is grilled out on the grill. 
you got the good fats and stuff in here. You've got definitely lots of vegetables to go with it and a few little bit of fiber to help keep you regular. So we're going to go ahead and wash our lettuce. You always want to wash your lettuce and stuff because it's out in the fields and you don't know what gets put out on the fields or how well it's all washed. Now what would be great is tomorrow, if I take out some shrimp, then I can use the same salad mix that I have right here and basically put the shrimp on here, same other ingredients, and have totally different flavor. I'm gonna put a couple of paper towels on the bottom of the pan here so that way get that extra moisture and stuff out of there. Now we have that steak over there um, with those flavors getting sucked into them. And after I make the salad, I'm gonna go fire up the grill so we can get that sucker nice and hot and get ready to eat a really good meal. Love how beautiful, look at, look at that color. That looks gorgeous. I love onions, spring onions, red onions, yellow onions, sweet onions. My uh, grandfather was a heavy drinker and he was also a gardener. He loved to grow stuff and he would eat an onion a day like it was an apple, literally. And he lived to be really, really old. So I don't know if that was the reason, but I'm gonna eat my onions and my garlic because I think they're good for you. The other thing you'll notice about this is the colors that you see. A lot of eating is the look that you see. And we'll wash some of these tomatoes and add some of these. You can cut them in half. You can cut them in half, in which case they'll kind of, they're, they're prettier cut in half, but then the juice kind of runs out of them. And if you're going to use it for a couple of days, then you don't want to do that. But you can see how nice and pretty that looks right there. So we got our steak ready. We got our salad ready. We're going to grate some of this cheese, and in the meantime, I'm going to get out a pot, and I'm going to take some of this red pepper and some of this onion, and I'm going to take a little bit of cilantro and some of the garlic and saute that before I add the beans to it. And that's going to be just enough to really give you an incredible taste to it. And this will be better than any steak bowl that you get at Chipotle, I can guarantee you. I like Chipotle, but their steak is just too, way too um, dried out. So let me shift positions here. All right, so we've got our pot on here. We're going to put a little bit of olive oil in there. We're going to add our onions and our peppers. And I'm going to chop up some of that elephant ear garlic to go with this. And we're going to saute that until it's clarified.
Now, I didn't even know we had this. This is a cheese grater, I guess, in container. In one. So I'm going to grate some cheese to go in this, and we'll be able to put it in the fridge. We've drained. We have a can of Rotep. That's it. Just the totally chili powder, the can of beans, and the Rotel. And we'll turn that down and just let it simmer. Now it's time to cook the steak. Oh, so we've got this grill. This is basically my portable one that we ended up buying some years ago. It's not a great grill, but it will do the job here. What we've learned on this grill is it gets hottest here in the middle. The sides, not so much, and it's hottest here at the peak. Um, what'll happen is this will get too hot to the point where it'll melt all the fat and it hits the flame in there and it will burn up. So you have to kind of watch this, but it doesn't get hot enough that you can really sear it like I like. So it's one of those things that you kind of have to learn. But you see, you see the moisture that's on top of there where it's actually absorbed most of that moisture that I put on there. We've got those herbs and those spices. And so now we're gonna go ahead and get this thing going. Now, I'm gonna put it on here as high as it goes. It is up all the way and try and get it to sear. Um, you, for me, I like investing in one of these digital thermometers because I like to get it right at about 130 degrees because I like mine a warm red center. Um, you'll get that, that point. Now remember, when you take it off, it's still going to cook. Don't cut it right away because if you do, all of that juice will run out of it. It'll lose the, the tenderness and all that. You want it to rest for a few minutes and having one of these will get you at just the right temperature. So I'm gonna let this go ahead and go and um, we're gonna be eating dinner real soon. Oh, I can't wait. Oh my goodness, I can't wait. Although I'm looking over here and it's getting kind of cloudy over here. Hopefully those bad storms will hold off until after I get this steak cooked. Yeah. All right, so it's been a couple of minutes. Ooh, look at that. Oh my goodness. Let, let me get you guys a little closer here. We're gonna flip this bad boy over. You see what I mean by the fat in there? Look at that. All right, we're gonna do the same thing here. Let it go through for about another um, couple of minutes, and then we'll move it over some, so that way the juices are locked into it, and then we basically can broil it to get it to the temperature that we want in the middle. That way it'll be nice and brown on the outside and flavorful on the inside. I saw somebody who had, um, they did a Facebook post and they had an ultra well done steak sliced through it and it was just like the same color on the outside and the inside. And they said, what's the first thing that you thought of when you saw that? And I said, fire the cook. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Yes. I will in just a second. I, the steak's not done yet. It's gonna be done. So. We got the windstorm here that keeps blowing out the fire. We're going to try and reconnect this one more time. And see if the butter.
blowing the flame out. All right. We'll put it in the oven. Onto the That's what I have to say about that. And um, now we have, of course, uh, finally, the weather has cooled down. Excuse me. The um, wind and stuff uh, has cooled down. And I got my steak. We've let that kind of rest. And we're going to go ahead. And we're going to slice this thing up. And we're going to make our steak salad. Oh, man. Now, my wife was reminding me because she wants to make sure I don't put out any misinformation out there. She is saying that she's reading about grilling, that you gotta be careful with the char that you have when you are grilling, um, because there's reports that say that that is a carcinogen, which is true. The thing on it is, is the more you cook it, the more well done it gets, then the more carcinogens you get out of the grill. And so, yeah, my thought is everything that you do is going to kill you. So it's all in which ones are going to kill you the less, the least. I will say it's probably better for me to go ahead and grill the steak and do the steak salad than it is for me to go eat at McDonald's. Now you can see, this is the way I like my steak. Look at that. See, it's still nice and pink inside there. It's warm to the touch. You've got the, oh, just as tender. You can taste the garlic. You can taste the rosemary. You can taste all those great flavors. Mmm. Chipotle ain't got nothing on me, bro. Ain't got nothing on me. And so we're going to get ready to fix this steak salad. Oh, man. Mmm. <laughs> you know I'm going to be gnawing on this bone, right? I'm just not going to do it on camera. You know I'm going to be like a pit bull. Oh, my goodness. That is so good. So much flavor to that. Oh, I love it. And so, here's the other thing, too. This meal, okay, that steak was $17. I think it was a 1.3 pounds uh, steak. That was, of course, the biggest cost in this. But dinner for two here probably will be about $25 um, for both of us, which is not bad. You can't beat that. That would be like going to, uh, that's actually less than what I've spent at Wendy's. So we got our bed of lettuce here. We're going to put some cheese on there. Oh, Nelly. Oh, Nelly. We're going to put some fresh avocado. Baby, I need you to come do a taste test. We're going to put no more than about a quarter cup of beans, just a little bit, okay? A little bit of beans on there, because you got to have some beans. And we're going to put a little bit of, this is a medium hot salsa. Right there. And put a little bit more cheese on it because I'm cheesy. This horseradish cheese is really, really good. And then we made, um, look back on uh, yesterday's recipe, I showed you how I make my blue cheese dressing. And then we put some of this great steak on there. And that, my friends, honey, can you come here and do a taste test? You don't have to be on camera. And we'll get a little bit of fresh pepper. Yes. Okay. Let me snap a picture. Look at that. Oh, oh. God, that's so pretty. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. So we're going to get the missus to taste that and see how. I that is a little one. This is a little one. That's a little one. Okay. Well, you can wrap it up and eat it later, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is so pretty. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Now, again, that's about, about a $12 meal. 
You like that, huh? Mm. You like that? I like it. <laughs> okay, so um, if this is unhealthy, well, let me eat all this. don't let you eat all that. Mm -mm. It's you know what? I'm not. I won't be mad if you do because it's not a whole lot of meat that's in there. It's a whole lot of uh, vegetables. So please, I'm gonna let you eat it all. So this is what I mean by when I say I'm doing keto. Um, the only thing in here that's, I guess you could say, would have been processed would be the cans of beans, the can of beans in here. Everything else is all stuff that we've gotten um, and cooked fresh. So, yeah. I like it. Mm. You hear her? Delish. Is it cilantro in it? Um, a little bit of cilantro in with the beans. Mm -hmm. All right, good people. Tomorrow, um, maybe shrimp, a shrimp bowl. And that's another one that's real easy too. Great meal. It'll uh, definitely be flavorful and uh, you will enjoy. I'm Mark Holmes and let's see if I can get rid of this. Eating like this. Mm. Peace.